The first wave of immigration into Seattle was a Swedish and Norwegian community, and a lot has changed from the 1800s to now. But one place that keeps the Swedish community alive is the Swedish club. So we're going to the Swedish club. We're going to be tasting some Swedish meatballs. And most importantly, a rare dish called lusfis that came from the Vikings. Hello, Sheldon. I'm Christine Hi, Leander. Christine. So tell me about the Swedish club. We are a 125-year-old organization here in Seattle that started with immigrants. We celebrate Nordic customs and celebrations and holidays here at the Swedish club. Okay, I'm excited to roll my sleeves up and make some meatballs. We come in and swag you with the, with the shoes today. Oh, Man, I need to get some like that though. <laughs> Good job. You hired, man. Yes. <laughs> but what we're doing here today is just typical, very Swedish food. And this is lutzfis. Lutzfis, which means lye fish. So lutzfis is, is preserved with lye, which is like an alkaline. It's like for wa wear washing and stuff. Yes, absolutely. And this is just cod? Yes, it can be cod or any other white fish. Oh, okay. In my province where I come, we do it this way. It's just air dry, very thin like a piece of board, mm -hmm. and with lye. On the 9th of December, you start soaking it in cold water and you add a little lye to it. Now the fish is really swelled up beautifully like this and change it every day until Christmas Eve. And that's typically when the Swedes eat their lutefisk. That's a long process. It's a long process. On the night, you better be on it. That's right, <laughs> that's right. Okay, Sheldon, we're gonna ground some mustard here. And this is gonna be for the sauce for the lutefisk. For the lutefisk, yes. It's a real cannonball. You can feel how heavy that is, right? It's like... <laughs> oh my goodness. You, ca you, can, you kind of get it going. And you go down and pick up more mustard and get it up there on the side. <laughs> all right. My rhythm's not as good as yours. It's all in the hips. <laughs> there you go. You, you get the glutes working. <laughs> and you get mustard seeds. Oh, no, no, no. When I brought this over from Sweden <laughs> and I was caught in customs, they say, what is that? <laughs> you say, all I want to do is make my mustard. What's the different influences of uh, Swedish cuisine? A lot of seafood, a lot of fish. Basically ate a lot of husmanskost, the houseman's food. Okay. Meatloaves, meatballs. And whose recipe is this? It's my own. Some Swedish meatballs. Mm, meatballs. Half pork and half beef. Onions, white pepper and salt. Eggs, breadcrumbs. It's not Swedish unless there's a little, little bit, bit of cream. cream. I like that. We have a large Nordic community here, and we have a, an area named Ballard. A lot of Scandinavians settled there back in the days. You grew up in Sweden? I did. Yeah. I was 22 when I came here, then had my daughter, and we would come down here and celebrate the Lucia. It's a very big day in Sweden, and they have that celebration here every year. Are there any other Swedish clubs around? We're the only one in America. Oh. We're the only one that has a, a club like this that's just dedicated to socializing. This club was started by men, mm -hmm. and they were immigrants. Started a club to be with each other, sing songs and eat food and smoke cigarettes and <laughs> play cards and do what men do. At the time of the Seattle World's Fair, it's 1960, we moved to this building. Not until 1989 did we admit women, so it's relatively oh, recent. Yeah. And now it, it's a community place. People tell us that it's the anchor of the Scandinavian American community. Right. This is Aquavit, and look at the person and say skull. Skull. I'm gonna get by a little bit of the gravy. I love the addition of the lingonberry, brightens up the palate. Probably can eat like 50 of those. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this was cod that was, uh, preserved in lye. You think of something that's pre preserved for that long would have a real fermented taste or that will coming off of it, but it's very mild. The key, I think, is that mustard sauce, which I had a blast doing because uh, 
I think I took a few inches off of my hips. <laughs> They were one of the first uh, immigrants to come here. Swedes and Norwegians okay. were among the first. As this area was being built, those same skills that people used in Scandinavia were very useful. They needed the farmers to, to grow the food, they needed the fishermen to catch the fish, they needed the carpenters, they needed the loggers. Mm -hmm. And so we have a huge population of Scandinavian people. They are more dilute than they used to be and they have become Americans. Yeah. We also have a new wave of Swedes and, and Scandinavians and they have come to work in the software. Okay. How big of a change have you seen in the city in this past uh, few years? The change in the city is huge. People can't afford to, yeah. to live in where they used to live anymore. Uh, would you consider the Swedish club your home? Oh, absolutely, it's home. <laughs> it's spaces like this in, in cities that people can find you know, a sense of belonging, I guess. That was amazing. Yes. In the flick of the wrist. <laughs> Just. <laughs>